Hey, how's it going, you guys? It's Pet Platypus here, and it's time to review a couple more episodes of Hunter x Hunter. Um, so yeah, we don't get a continuation of the previous episode. Fuck you, Hunter x Hunter. But, um, essentially, there's not really much happens in this episode. We got Pito and Yupi still trying to stop the king from remembering certain things. They're kind of figuring out, okay, words are kind of the trigger and everything, so we gotta watch what we say. And we get a scene with Knuckle and uh, Chameleon Bro. And they're like, okay, we gotta fucking bail. Because we see the king, just he nends up. And he's like, I'm gonna go search for these guys on my own. And fucking Poof's like, but we won't be there with you. And he just nends up. And he's like, do you really think any of them can touch me right now? And Knuckle and Chameleon Bro try to bail. Um, everyone feels that shit. Uh, we get... Him just activating this fucking N. This N is just disgusting. It literally glows everywhere. And then all of a sudden, he's just like, bye, Knuckle, Knuckle. Done. He's just right by him. Done. Hits Chameleon, bro. And I'm like, you're fast as... No! You're too fast, bro. You're it's disgusting. So, yeah, that was crazy fucking shit. Um, he catches them. He says he's going to interrogate them, so they're not dead. That's interesting. I'll see what the whole interrogation is about. Uh, maybe that's how he'll find out about Kamugi again, but uh, we get the king saying, like, they say Pito, and he remembers who Pito is, and he remembers, and I kind of thought of this as I was watching the episode, I was like, oh, he's going to remember telling Pito to do something, and he remembers, I'm counting on you, and he says, bring Pito here. Good luck with bringing Pito there. I mean, you know, good luck with that. That's, that's not going to happen. Um, we get Palm... She's got Komugi with her, and she sees Gon and Killua, and Killua's carrying Gon away, and he still has, like, the long hair, but it's not as long, but it still looks kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, they're good to go. Or not good to go, but we don't know really what happened. There was a massive explosion, and then, I mean, you know, Killua's fine, obviously, and so yeah, but, uh, she's scared as fuck. Palm is, because, you know, she doesn't know what to do. The king could just attack. She's gonna try and go underground. Ikolgo meets up with her, does this epic slide and roll, which is just, oh, I love Ikolgo. He's just amazing. He was talking about how he's not going to go down without a fight and how he's going to set up a trap and shit. Dude, if Ikolgo sacrifices himself for the greater good, he's like the perfect character. I'm just, oh, he's the best. Um, but yeah, and uh, they end up getting her down below where all those houses are, and they put her in a bed. And then earlier in the episode... I guess this was, like, the real meat of the episode, so I'll talk about this, you know, last. The king is offered a contest by Poof, because, you know, Poof doesn't want him to go out and find these people, because he'll see Kamugi. So, what he basically says is, we'll have a contest, but we need handicaps, because you're so fucking overpowered hacks. And he's like, okay, yeah, contest, I'm, I'm listening, I'm listening. And so Poof's like, you know, you'll find them, or we'll find Pito first, and... You know, you can only use the end one more time, and then he says, I'll grant you guys wishes if you win. Like, he's a fucking Shenron or some shit. Which, considering the Dragon Ball references, I would not be surprised. We already had, like, a mock Shenron. But, um, anyway. And then he, then they say, well, what happens if you win? And he's like, oh, well, you're going to tell me what you're hiding. And I was like, yo, nice. Because he's talking about how their emotions are intertwined. Which I was thinking that for a while, like, their emotions are, like, intertwined or whatever, so wouldn't he know that something's up, or wouldn't there be some kind of hint, and yes, there is. But he's real respectful about it, he's real cool about it, he's like, if you guys win, then I won't, I won't pry, it's cool, you have your reasons, you're loyal. Then Poof and Yubi make these faces, because they're loyal, because, I mean, the gay shit just can't stop, but, I mean, it was short, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. But here's Contest. And it sticks with him, and obviously the Goongi game. So Poof wanted to choose his words wisely, but he clearly isn't. Um, and he's still thinking about it, and it's stuck in his mind. Contest, contest. So he's getting his memories back. Um, as far as story progression goes, they're having this little contest, so Poof can buy time to kill Kamugi. Uh, that's cool, the contest is cool. Knuckle and fucking Chameleon Bro are knocked out and captured. Palm and what's the name went downstairs, and now they've got her in a bed, uh, Kamogi in a bed. Apparently they're going to set a trap. So, I mean, decent-ish progression overall. Animation was nothing special. It was fine. The moment when he just took out Knuckle and Chameleon Bro was just, oh, that was disgusting, though. That was just, that was truly epic. 
just comes up there, just out of nowhere, just takes them out in an instant and brings them back, like, done. So yeah, he's on a whole other level. I don't see how any character can actually, like, kill this guy. There's no way he has to die from some other means besides a fight, because there's just no way anyone can beat him. The only person who could maybe is Gone, but... Pito said that he was as strong as the king, and Pito didn't know about the king after the explosion, so that'd be as strong as the previous version of the king. Now he's on some Super Saiyan foot fucking 24 shit, so yeah, Gon would probably still not be able to beat him, even in his like adult form, so yeah. Let's see where things go. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a good episode, 7.5 out of 10. Nothing truly mind-blowing or spectacular, but it had a decent amount of progress, I guess. Animation was nothing special. Uh, just some really cool moments throughout. So yeah, I'll go 7.5 for this episode, and now I will talk about 33. Okay, you guys, so... My outside means of killing the king theory is, is true. Um, yeah, so episode 133... I believe this arc ends on 135 or 136, I'm not sure, because I remember being on Crunchyroll, like, a few months back, when I was, like, in the middle of, like, maybe York New or something, and I remember saying, you know, Anime Studio talks about the Chimera Ant arc ending on episode 135 or 136 or something like that, so I think that's when the arc's gonna end. Makes sense, to, given what's happened in these past couple episodes. Um, this episode, basically, it's... Wolverine kind of doing cool shit, actually. I know, of all the characters, right? Doing cool shit. Um, not, nothing super cool, but, you know, he was kind of interesting. Um, apparently the girls that were down below, they're, like, totally irrelevant. Apparently they're gonna go, uh, free. Do their thing. Wolverine took them. Ikalgo was talking to Wolverine about our former lives. Now we were friends, which is kind of convenient, but whatever. Uh, and he talks about Gyro again. Whoever the fuck that is, we already know everything about his fucking childhood. Haven't even met the character. But yeah, he tells him about Gyro and how, you know, you want to meet him and everything. And Wolfren's kind of got this inner, like, turmoil going on. And then we've got the king growing more impatient, thinking about the contest. He finds a Goongi piece, and it just hits him like a train. And he starts drawing the game on the ground. He remembers that he was there was someone he couldn't beat, and he was trying to remember who it is. And he still hasn't found her yet. He hasn't found Kamugi yet. But, uh, where was I at? Yeah, but he's there. Poof shows up. Poof's like, oh, fuck, man. He found the game and everything. But before that, we have Wolfrin versus UP. Not really, but Wolfrin's kind of like, fuck the Chimera Ants. He literally pretty much says, they're our enemy, basically throwing away his entire Chimera Ant side and pretty much becoming mostly human again, aside from looking the way he looks. So that's really interesting. Um, I'm trying to think how many ants are left right now. We've got the one bitch and the dude with the big eyebrows, and they bailed. They're, like, gone, I guess. I don't know what the fuck's going to happen with them, but... And then there's all those other ants that went out trying to become kings of their own. I mean, we saw what happened to a few of them. They got fucking phantom trooped, but the rest of them we don't know. But, uh, yeah, it seems like they're really gain gaining their humanity back. Um, but, yeah, he challenges Yuppie to a fight, and Yuppie has, like, this nosebleed. I'm like, what was that? And he's been coughing, too, so I was like, what the fuck's wrong with Yuppie? He's lying there dead on the ground, and... Pooh finds him, and he's like, yo, someone killed Yuppie. I think we're meant to think someone killed Yuppie, but in reality, I think he just dropped dead. Because of the nosebleeds, and because of the coughing, and because cons Palms, she was watching Yuppie, I believe. Uh, maybe. Actually, maybe she wasn't watching Yuppie. Maybe she was watching Poof, and she saw Poof arrive at Yuppie's body, but she knows that the king is going to die. Why? I have no fucking clue, but he had a nosebleed also. Well, that, that has to be explained, obviously. I don't mind that something outs an outside force is going to kill the king. I just want to know what it is, and hopefully it makes sense. Um, but yeah, and we also see, like, a flashback of, like, the rose explosion at some point in this episode. I mean, like, if it's something Netero did, oh, that's going to be amazing, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the entire episode, though. I'm trying to think if anything else really happened... Yeah, there hasn't been any interrog hasn't been any interrogations with Knuckle or uh, Chameleon Bro yet, so that hasn't really moved forward. But Yupi is dead, and that's enormous because he's one of the major villains of this arc or antagonists or whatever you want to call him. That's enormous. Um, the fact that they're gonna die, 
for whatever reason, we don't know yet, but the fact that that's going to happen is also monumental. Um, Kamugi is now, like, fully, like, hidden away. Um, Wolverine, we don't know what happened to him. Uh, we just saw Yuppie laying on the ground. We didn't see what happened to Wolverine, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much... There wasn't much in this episode, but the fact that we got a death of a royal guard... I mean, we already had a death of another royal guard before, but now that we have another royal guard dead, and the fact that the king and Poof are probably going to die, too... That's monumental, so, I mean, this episode's already going to get, like, an 8 out of 10 on that alone. I mean, that's just enormous, so... Yeah, I'll give it an 8 out of 10, overall, because nothing really was bad that would lower that rating, and nothing was really that special to rank it any higher, so... I'll go 8 out of 10 for this episode, really because of that, those things, the death of a royal guard and the fact that the king and Poof are going to die relatively soon. That's enormous, so we'll just have to see what happens and how it's explained, but, uh, yeah... Definitely very interesting. So, I'm trying to remember if that's everything in the episode. I'm trying to just make sure. Oh, yeah, and Poof coughs up blood, so he might, you know, be not long. He might be gone in the next episode, but um, we'll have to wait and see. I was recommended a live reaction for 135. Uh, I've been doing a lot of those. Like, you know, every it seems like every other video I make has been a live reaction, and they're mostly worth it, but... Um, that's a lot of editing, so we'll see. I'll try to do a live reaction, but, um, yeah, we'll see what I do for 135, but hopefully I'll do a live reaction. Hopefully it's, you know, really, really good and everything. If not, I'll just, you know, scrap it and do a regular review, but, uh, yeah. That's pretty much all I have to say about this episode. 8 out of 10 for those two monumental things, and everything else was all fine, and everything kind of progressed a little bit, so yeah, 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching this video. Tell me what you guys thought of these episodes in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.